Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again to do another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a repeat of a past video. When I very first started with YouTube, I did a tag video that was called Cute Bags that are a P-I-T-A, meaning pain in the bleep, and it didn't take off because nobody knew who I was. And at the time, since I had less than 500 subscribers, I couldn't tag anybody. I mean, I wrote their names in the description box and I tagged them under the tag feature, which will draw attention to your video based on the names you put there. But I thought that was tagging and that's not tagging. When you're a YouTuber and you have over 500 subscribers, you can put in your description box the at symbol and then follow it with the name of the YouTuber who you want to tag and it will alert them. And then all of a sudden they know to come look at your video and figure out why in the heck you mentioned their name. So now that I have over a thousand subscribers, I can easily tag as many individuals as I want to, to do this video. I'm going to modify the name of the video a little bit, and I'm just going to call it bags that I keep because they're cute, but they're really a pain in the butt. And I'm going to change it to that just to be politically correct, because I think that there may be a few out there who a word you have to bleep out may bug, and I don't want to bug anybody. So I have two bags that fall in this category, and I'm going to go ahead and grab them now. Okay, so the Pollen Numero Un Nano and the Beat Bag 18 are my two bags. I'm going to start with the Beat Bag 18. As you all know, if you've watched any of my previous videos where I've showed what's in my bag, I do not carry that much stuff. And one of the drawbacks of this particular bag, which let me just say, it's gorgeous. When I say cute, I mean cute. It's got an ivory color, which goes with so many of my novelty straps. It's got these gorgeous golden rivets around it. I've accessorized it with a little Rexy charm on the hang tag. And I got that by taking another charm apart, much like I modified my chains in that video that I just did a couple days ago. And it also has a back pocket. Now the back pocket, it's maybe barely, no, it's not really wide enough. This is an iPhone 11 Pro case. It's not wide enough to put a phone in like that, but if you're walking around the store, you could definitely put your phone in like that. And I think the leather's thick enough that you're gonna not get too much of an imprint from it, especially if you're just doing it occasionally. But my beef with this bag is, number one, the chain strap that it came with has links like this. Now this is my pillow tabby extender piece. I've got two of these that I can extend the strap on any bag that I want to extend it on. So these kind of links, when they're little, they're not bad because like for instance, with this bag, the links were little, but on the Beat 18, the chain strap that comes with it's too short to go over my shoulder. On the regular size Beat bag, the chain strap has larger, larger links like this. And it is long enough to go over my shoulder, but the links hurt. I don't like links to hurt. That's probably why I like chains like this that are flat. So the way I tackled the first obstacle with the chain is I got a different chain strap. And like I've said in the past, these Amazon chains, they match pretty much perfectly. So this bag looks really cute on the shoulder with this chunky chain strap. The second beef or issue that I have with this bag is with the crossbody strap. So the bag comes with three straps. It comes with this removable top handle, which is the only one that I don't have an issue with. It comes with a chain strap, which is too short to go over the shoulder. And then it comes with this strap. And you know, I did say the chain strap's too short to go over the shoulder. If you like this bag and you like the chain strap, you could get these extenders and extend that chain strap. I do not know if these links are the same size as the Beat 18 chain strap, but I do think they're pretty darn close. The dog leash clip part is probably gonna be a different size. It's probably gonna be smaller on the extenders. And when I say dog leash clip, I'm talking about this part because it looks like 
the end of a dog leash. This is how most coach clips are. You could also do this with the extenders from Amazon. And again, I'll link all these Amazon chains down below, but you see how I just extended the strap with these adorable extenders. And look how cute that is on my shoulder. It really drops at like the very most perfect length that you could imagine. I am constantly amazed by these and they come in all different colors. They come in silver, they come in gunmetal, they come in this antique gold, and I believe they also come in regular gold. So these are definitely handy to have. They're not just good for if you need to make your crossbody strap longer. They can also take a top handle and make it into a shoulder strap. Coach did the clip on this part of the bag differently. I actually really like that clip. It looks fancy and it opens just like so, so that you can actually remove the strap. I don't usually remove this strap because it is a great top handle. So there's an advantage of this bag. I love this as a top handle. But let me just show you this. This strap does not come with these dog leash clips. I got these dog leash clips by scavenging them from a novelty strap that I bought very cheaply. And then I got some generic Amazon clips and I sold it very cheaply. So with that whole process, I ended up paying about $10 for these two clips so that instead of removing the strap when I'm not using the bag, which would involve pulling it over these two little beads, I can just unclip it and hang it up on my strap rack. When a strap has this type of detaching or detachment mechanism, I really don't like to take it on and take it off because those little holes, they're gonna get stretched out and I don't wanna do that. Same thing with the adjustments. I do not want to open and close those all the time because every time you do, the holes get stretched. You can see right here, you can see there's a little bit right there where the leather is sort of bent. That's just from taking it out once or twice because once I figured out the length here too that I wanted it at, I left it there. So now that I've got my strap the way I want it with the clips so that I can remove it easily, this is a great crossbody bag. This is a great date night bag. This is a great anytime bag because it's not too big and it's lightweight. The leather is thick and gorgeous. It is smooth, but it's not thin. So I say most of the things about this bag are good, but two of the three straps are an issue for me. And the final issue for me is what it holds. Here's my normal contents of my bag minus my phone. This bag is pretty small. So if I wanna stuff the pouch in, I can. I mean, I've really crammed it in there. I do have a slightly smaller pouch that I could switch into if I was using this bag, but you see, it's in there. I've got three card holders, two of which I'm gonna put upright in the back. So that fits like that. I've got my regular card holder, which holds the ones that I use the most, and that's my K-Facet card holder, my key fob, my AirPods case, and my pouch with my headache medicine. So that is everything that I normally carry minus my cell phone. So yes, you can fit a lot in this. What is missing? My cell phone. Can I fit it in the back pocket upright? Yes, I can. Am I gonna risk denting it? Yes, I will, because it's very full. But given that this is not a bag that I'm going to carry every day, even though it does fit my daily essentials, albeit a bit tightly, I'd say the capacity for it's pretty darn good. If you look here, I do have a little bit of bulging right there. And again, if I remove my pouch for the one that's an inch shorter in width, I could easily make that go away. Why don't we just pretend there's not bulging and that this is only happening because I'm not using my correct pouch. And the pouch that I would use for smaller bags, it really holds the same amount of stuff. You just have a little bit less material and it's a little tighter squeeze. One other thing about the Beat 18 is if you look at it, it has a center divider. Now, while this pocket here could be useful for receipts, it severely limits what you can put in this bag. When I show you the next bag, you'll be able to see how much I can fit in that bag 
and it does not have the center compartment. The beat bag has this back pocket too. So why does it need this one, coach? Why did you put this in? Is this a structural thing? Because I don't think we're gonna lose structure of this bag with this ridge here and with the stiffness of the leather. So eh, I would say this is a negative two. So in summary, this bag is just a bit too small and two of the three straps have functional issues. And that's kind of a bummer because one of the great advantages of Coach is that you get multiple strap when you buy these bags and that's a real value enhancer. So to have two of the three have issues that you have to go back and correct later to make them work for you, that is a bummer. But I keep this bag because it's so cute. Look at it. It's just precious. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I don't like the bigger beat bags. I like the beat 18 in terms of the way it looks and the way it looks on my body. I like how lightweight it is. I like how it's easier to open this flap on the big one. The flap is very rigid and just awkward because it's so big. So this bag has a lot going for it, but for me, the main issues are a little bit too small and, and too unfunctional or poorly designed straps. The next bag I want to show you is my Palen Numero Und Mini. It's the second bag I'd like to show you. This bag is in the color lilac and it's in the grained leather. I can't remember if they call it grained or pebbled, but it's kind of halfway between a pebble and a Safiano. It's very durable. I haven't used this bag that much, but it's a very adorable little bag. And let me just show you the main thing that bugs me again with this bag, which is so cute, is the strap. Once again, the strap comes with these pegs. So to adjust it smaller or larger, or to take it off the bag, you have to pull the leather out from those. And when you do that, you make the holes bigger and eventually you're gonna make them too big. So what can you do? You can somehow try to roll it up and stuff it behind the bag, which I wouldn't wanna do because even if you're not storing it on your shelf, it's gonna potentially leave marks on the back of the bag. I mean, that's not good. So what I did is I took two rings that I got from Motto, and I can link those below. And these are O spring rings, they both open. I took two so that I could get it positioned correctly when it's hanging on me because these do not have a swivel. If I could find one with a swivel, I could just use one, but these are a good match and they actually look kind of cute when it's on. So let me show you. So rather than the leather hooking directly onto those D rings there, I now have two little gold pieces on each side and I feel like those dress up the bag. One of the advantages people love to have in a bag is a back pocket. But tell me, what are you gonna put in this back pocket? Are you gonna put your phone? I mean, I guess you could for a second, but that's gonna really jack up your back pocket, so no. Are you gonna put your card case, perhaps? Well, it's not wide enough to put your card case in unless you put it vertical and then it's sticking out. And again, it's gonna mess up the back pocket. So unless you wanted to put maybe one card in it, like this one, you could, but do you want to have a loose credit card in there that could potentially fall out? I say no. So I'm going to say that I would put the items inside the bag. Now, if you look in here, there's actually a fair amount of space. There's an interior pocket right here and it unsnaps right here to make it bigger. Now that could be considered an advantage or it could be considered a disadvantage. I'm gonna go ahead and put my items in. I've got my pouch, I've got my three card holders. Okay, so I've got everything in there, including my phone. Now, if you don't wanna mess with the hassle of snapping these back up, you can just clip it and it looks okay with those unsnapped but that is an extra step if you want it to be all buttoned up, which could be considered a pain in the rear. I snapped it up. It's got a magnetic closure here. So there we go. So this bag has more in it because it has my phone in it. So in that sense, that's great. You know though, I have another issue. Everybody loves feet, right? I love feet. I have no complaints against feet, but this bag, because of the way the feet are, you see how it's on this curve up here? 
unless you position the strap correctly in the back and you are in fact using a strap, the bag tips forward. So that's a bit of a drawback. It's a great crossbody bag. I do like it. I love the color and I think it hits in a really nice spot. So once I've modified the strap and decided not to use the back pocket, I've got the major issues out of the way, which is why this cute bag, which I consider a pain, is still in my collection. Also is the fact that Pauline has not that great of resale value, even though it is a very luxurious brand. And so why would I get rid of it? It is cute. It's functional once I modify it, with the exception of tipping over. Let me show you one other option. If you don't want to go through the hassle of putting clips on your chain, you could just carry this bag with one of the gorgeous chain straps I've showed you in the past. This is a lightweight aluminum chain by the brand XIAZW, and it's a great option to, to wear. It's comfortable too. So no modifications necessary, pretty much all the issues fixed. So long as I don't use the back pocket and I don't mind buttoning up the inside and I'm okay with using this chain or linking two little O-rings together to attach the other chain. So that in a nutshell explains to you why I think these bags are cute, adorable bags that I keep in my collection but that are a bit of a pain in the butt. They have issues, but don't we all? So I would say, if you like the way they look and you're okay with these issues, go for it. They're great bags. They're just not perfect. And sometimes it's just not realistic to expect perfection. Although I do like to achieve it when possible. I'm Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed this video. I'm going to tag a whole slew of my YouTube friends as well as YouTubers who I enjoy their content and hopefully this will catch on this time now that I'm able to actually tag people. This is the last day to enter my giveaway so make sure you go and do that. Go to my community page, make a comment on the picture that includes the giveaway items, and make sure in that comment you include your Instagram handle as well as one thing you like about my channel. It could be something small like you like my closet or something small like you think my hair looks especially nice today. It doesn't matter. Just something positive, one thing. I look forward to giving away these items and plan to do so very soon. Take care and have a fantastic day. Bye.